Chapter 8.5 is about alternating series and absolute convergence. Let's think back to some of the uh, polynomials we've seen that approximate other functions, like sine of x equals x minus 1 over 3 factorial x squared, x cubed, plus 1 over 5 factorial, blah, 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 minus 1 over 7 factorial. Saw the same thing for cosine. Uh, we didn't spend a lot of time on log uh, x. It turns out to be a little easier to write the series for log of 1 plus x, um, but it ends up being something like this. And we notice we've always got this plus here, minus there, plus here, minus there, etc. Um, so there's a special name for this. This is called an alternating series that always has the signs, the plus and the minus, go plus, minus, plus, minus. Um, or if, uh, these don't start with a minus, but you could start a series with a minus if you wanted. Um, so an alternating series always has this um, has the signs change every other term uh, and not just haphazardly like sometimes you have a plus sometimes you have a minus with no discernible pattern um, we actually can allow it to have some kind of haphazard stuff as long as eventually after some cutoff the signs start going plus minus plus minus so that's what I've said here um, so that's the idea of an alternating series let's define some notation for them um, so we're going to say the a sub n part is just the positive part without the flip-flopping uh, signs part and the flip-flopping signs part could be negative 1 to the n it could be negative 1 to the n minus 1 if we want to shift all the pluses to be minuses and vice versa or negative n plus 1 but it would be shifting all the pluses and minuses the other way um, so we'll always think of a sub n as the positive part of the uh, of the sums uh, of the sequence um, and then the big question is what can we say about the convergence of alternating series so let's take a quick example um, let's use the alternating harmonic series here um, so I've got the blue is basically 1 over n but with every other term being negative and let's draw in the partial sums the s sub n well s sub 1 would be equal to uh, the very first term so that would just be a sub 1 so that's 1 there and then how about s sub 2 that would be the first blue dot plus the second blue dot let's think about that second blue dot it is at negative 1 half and so when I add that to this blue to this red dot I'm going to be moving down by a half uh, so a half is about here so I'll end up here and I'm moving down that way and then when I add this blue dot at uh, 3 I have a, a value of one third there I'm going to be moving up by a third so uh, this is at 0.5 right there I'm going to be moving up by a third and I get um, 0.833 and then when I add this blue dot it's a negative one fourth so I'm going to be doing, moving down by a fourth which is not as much as I moved up, right? I moved down a half and then up a third, which doesn't quite recover the down a half. Then I went up a third, but then down a fourth, so I'm not going as far down here as I started from there. So here I'm ending up at um, 0 0.588, uh, 0 0.5833, 333. And then I'm adding one fifth, so I'm moving back up, but not quite as much as I moved down just the second, just uh, one term ago. So I end up at 0.7833. So what seems like it's going to happen as I move more and more terms on, I'm going to keep moving up and down and up and down, but a little less each time. And so does it make sense that that should converge? So this is the harmonic series all by, if it's just 1 over n, it's harmonic. But here's the alternating harmonic. And it seems like it's going to convert. So that's what the alternating series test tells us. So it says an alternating series converges if the a sub n terms are purely decreasing, at least ultimately, like they might do something weird for the first 10 million or something, but if there's some cutoff you can put on, like after the 10 millionth term or after the 100 bazillionth term, everything, uh, the a sub n terms start, start purely decreasing, um, then this, this works. And we also need the limit of the a sub n's to be zero. Um, then we can say the series converges. Uh, that's what we say here. An alternating series converges if these two things both have to be true. So what might you guess about divergence then? You might guess that this would that we would then say uh, otherwise 
the alternating series diverges. But it turns out that that's not true. Uh, there are cases where at least one of these hypotheses is not satisfied, but the series, the alternating series still converges. So we're going to cross that out and write nope. So the alternating series test can prove that a series converges, an alternating series converges, but it never can prove that an alternating series diverges. And there's a problem or two on the homework that might be optional, I can't remember, where it asks us to construct a series that is alternating but uh, fails to satisfy at least one of these conditions and that converges, and maybe one that also uh, fails to satisfy one of these conditions and diverges. And that shows you that if an alternating series fails to satisfy these, then you can't make a conclusion because there's some that go one way, some that go the other. Next, we'll do some examples.